In this overview, we're going to take a quick look at the new capabilities introduced with VCF 901 in VCF Automation. In VCF Automation, we've now introduced the VKS Cluster Management capability. As usual, we can create clusters from inside of VCFA just as we've always been able to. However, under the Manage and Govern section, you'll find a new Kubernetes Management section. This is where we can apply policy and manage our Kubernetes clusters at scale. As you can see, every cluster that's created through VCF Automation will automatically be onboarded into the Kubernetes management capability. If we drill into VKS Cluster 1, we can see more information about that cluster. Requested an allocatable CPU, RAM, component health for various control plane components, how many worker nodes there are, and what the status of the agents that manage that cluster are. Additionally, we can enable and disable data protection, which we'll talk about in a second. We can see underneath nodes, we've got one control plane node and one worker node. We can drill further into these and get more information about each node in particular. We can see what pods are running on it, what namespace they're in, and we can drill into the pods as well. We get more information about the requested and current usage of those pods, what containers are inside each pod, and the source YAML for that pod. We can overview the namespaces in each cluster and drill down into them. Here is our open cart namespace, and we can see that we have a number of applications and Kubernetes CRDs as part of that. A deployment, a replica set, a pod, and a service. We can also view resources at a cluster level. This breaks out each of the resources into a unified list. We can hide workloads that are specific to VKS Cluster Manager, and we can hide system workloads. So what we see is only the components that we have deployed ourselves. Add-ons is a capability that's coming with VKS 3.5, is not yet released, and data protection is a capability that allows you to backup and restore and quiesce your clusters. You can see we have one backup here that will backup the open cart namespace. We can see what excluded namespaces there are, if there are any backup hooks, what namespaces are included, what persistent volumes are included, and if there are any pod volumes that are excluded. I can also restore that backup if I need to and delete the backup as well. We can see when it completed and when it expires and the target location. Currently, we support S3 object stores as a target for all backups. The backup capability is quite powerful. If we create a backup, we can choose to backup the entire cluster, a namespace, or resources based on a label selector if we're using label selectors. If we say a particular namespace, we'll choose open cart, any advanced options that we want, if we want to exclude or include cluster scoped objects. How do we want to back up our volumes? This is quite critical. So we're going to use a file system backup opt out approach, which means it includes every single volume that's included. We can use an opt in approach where we require an annotation to be added to each volume for it to be backed up. We can also choose to use CSI snapshot for persistent volumes. This means that our file system backups are quiesced correctly and reliable. We can also move our snapshot data to the target backup location as well. You can see it's done some validation here around whether or not we meet the prerequisites for CSI snapshots. And there's more information and documentation where you can learn how to do that. If we go into another cluster, for example, VKS cluster two, we go to data protection. We can also restore from another cluster. As we saw, we have a backup for VKS cluster one already. We have the open cart namespace backup. We can go next, restore the entire backup. And then are there any volumes to restore? There is one volume because it uses a MySQL database. And we'll give it a name and click restore. That is now restoring that entire namespace to this cluster, and it will automatically have that application rolled out in real time. Under policies, we can create templates. These templates are written in Rego, which is a standard policy templating language and defined by OPA Gatekeeper. So we can add any OPA Gatekeeper compliant object type to our templates. We can then assign our templates to clusters or cluster groups. So we can see here our Nimbus group 
has three clusters inside, and we've inherited a policy from the cluster group. So we can see in this case, the policy is warning us for every time a restricted action is taken on those clusters. This can be thought of a lot like group policy in Active Directory in that it's hierarchical. So we can see VKS cluster one is inheriting this policy from the Nimbus group, and the Nimbus group is inheriting it from the overall ACME org. Outside of security policies, we also have image registries and image registry policies. These allow us to define custom policies, for example, what host names are we allowed to pull from ports? Are we going to block particular tags like latest, for example, as a best practice? And then how do we enforce that? Do we warn, do we deny, or do we do a dry run to see what the impact would be before we enforce? Under quotas, again, we have the same hierarchical system. We can create a quota policy. There are a number out of the box, small, medium, and large, but we can also create custom policies. And this allows us to set CPU requests and limits quotas for specific namespace. We can either do that on an include basis or an exclude basis. We can add our custom policies here, which are the ones that are defined under templates. You can see here are our templates that currently exist. For example, if we wanted to only allow HTTPS ingress, we can then add our resource. We would say kind service and give it a policy name and force HTTPS. We create the policy and that will ensure that all services are only allowed to be created with HTTPS ingress, i.e. no HTTP. We also have the advanced mutation policies. These allow us to use mutation webhooks to change annotations, labels, or pod security policies on an arbitrary set of API groups and kinds. In Insights, we can see any of our violations of our policy assignments. So we can see here VKS cluster two in the open cart namespace that we just deployed has a warning for the restricted security policy. If we expand it, we can see that the pod that was affected, the details, it requested privilege escalation, and our enforcement action, which is currently just warn. We could equally block that if we wanted to. And finally, under configurations, we can see our credentials that are currently stored. At the moment, that is for S3 object stores and our target locations. So you can see at the minute we're using Seaweed FS and we have a bucket called demo that is S3 API compliant and it's currently being applied to all three clusters, cluster one, two, and three. We can arbitrarily create more backup locations those can be on-prem or off-prem hosted S3 instances. The credentials are obviously then related to these loca target locations. That was a quick overview of the new VKS cluster management capability within VCF automation in 9.0.1. For more information, check out the release blog in the description.